is Lawrence Wordloff, and I've been a volunteer of the Hollywood Sunset Free Clinic since I was 14. This small free clinic provides free health care to over 31,000 people in Los Angeles every year, and that includes men, women, and children. One volunteer in particular named Bob Suazo stood out to me. Though I had never met him, I always heard of him and his name. Volunteers, patients, community members, journalists, and local politicians all refer to him as a community hero. How did he do it? How does one person become a community hero? In 1967, Bob graduated high school and shortly thereafter was drafted to serve in the Vietnam War. He left behind his wife, who was his college sweetheart, and their young daughters. Bob served for over four years. In 1971, when he returned home from the war, he was severely depressed, suffering from PTSD, and was addicted to drugs and alcohol. He worked at various jobs and opened a mechanic shop, but spent most of his money on his addictions. His wife divorced him, and by 1984, he was homeless. Bob moved to San Pedro Street, a part of the Skid Row area in downtown Los Angeles, and lived in cardboard boxes and sleeping bags. Once every few months, he would visit his family, but eventually, he stopped returning home. We didn't know where he was, couldn't find him. We were, my older sisters were looking for him. My sister was going to Cal State LA at the time and was just going through newspaper clippings and everything, and then she ended up getting the LA Times and he was right from Page. This is when they had a tent city at City Hall. So she's like, I found dad, and I was like, where, you know? And she's like, he's homeless and he's living in downtown LA. And I was like, we gotta go. I think I was like in the fifth, fifth or sixth grade. And I was like, we gotta go. I go, can you take me to go see him? He was scruffy and he had like a mustache and like a beard going on. And he didn't have like, matching clothes you know he was it was just wasn't him it wasn't like the the dad i knew it just didn't look like him he looked he looked a little broken the day vicky and her sister found bob he said he couldn't go home yet he wasn't ready but two years later in 1988 he went to the hollywood sunset free clinic seeking counseling support there he met dr vickery Bob Suazo was a patient of mine who was suffering from severe depression and substance abuse. He eventually recovered and then he began to see that there were things that he could do to help other people. So then he became a volunteer and that's how the homeless outreach program started. Bob started joining the free clinic volunteers on their visits to homeless shelters where the staff set up makeshift examination rooms to treat individuals. He advised the volunteers on what to put in hygiene kits based on his experience living on the streets. And then you're homeless, and then you're between uh, 21 and 23. Very good. They threw all this stuff down in the And then you uh, no health insurance. When he first started his volunteer work, I think there was some discomfort on his part because he wondered whether he really had the ability to do this. And he was more cautious and quiet and subdued. But the more he did it, the more it brought out his personality. I think it was a tremendous uplifting experience for him. And he became more and more self-confident and self-assured. A funny, gregarious, good guy. In 1990, Bob became the director of the Homeless Care Program. Ready to expand the program, he started researching RVs to help him transport clinic volunteers, medical staff, and supplies between the clinic and homeless communities. In 1990, the Lorimar Foundation donated an RV to his program, and it changed everything. I remember when we got it, Bob sat in that mobile unit and he was in shock. He said, I'm just taking it all in. I just can't believe that we got this mobile unit. But it was a dream come true and you could see how happy he was. Not that many people had mobile units. We were one of the first group of clinics that had the mobile unit and we would go around. There were no regulations for them back then. So we would go around and provide the services and we were the model for that to start mobile units. Patients who cannot get here to us have a way of accessing health care if we go to them, if we make it a little easier and they know that we're going to be there once a week at the same time every week, they will be there, they'll show up. 
because they know they're going to get their checkup, they're going to get their medications, they're going to get their vaccinations, they're going to get whatever little things that they need. Taking the RV on the road to help the homeless became Bob's life. He drove it five or more days a week with a small volunteer medical staff from the clinic. And if there was no one available to help, he went alone. One special helper meant the world to him. His grandson Stevie was only eight years old when he asked to join Bob on the RV. Every weekend, Stevie would spend a night at Bob's house. The next morning, they would wake up around 4 or 5 a.m. to drive the RV to the local bakery, where the baker always set aside food for them to take to the homeless communities. Then, they would stop at the free clinic to pick up the volunteer doctors and nurses and then head out to the city. Meanwhile, under pressure, Bob continued to struggle with his history of addictions. There was a time that he was still struggling because I guess he would get overwhelmed. I remember one time he came to the house and he was, uh, he was a little drunk. And my mom told him, you know, what are you doing? You, you can't be doing this. You, you've come so far. Your daughters and everybody see you differently now. Every Tuesdays and Fridays, he went to his AA meeting at the local church. With the help of the clinic staff and the local community, Bob was able to overcome his daily battles with his personal history of addiction and depression. I knew that, you know, he was addicted at one time, that he, he was trying to stay clean. He really focused a lot when he was providing services, and I think the services that he was providing was something that really kept him going. One woman named Rachel lived on Skid Row and in local parks and remembered his weekly trips and the impact they left on the homeless community each time he pulled up in the RV. All the big puns, clapping, smiling and stuff. Yay! Bob is here! Bob is here! Yay! You know, so they'd be crying, you know, when they leave and stuff. Because they didn't expect so much. You know, some places, you know, they give you stuff too, but not like Bob. Bob gives his whole heart to the people and help them. Bob, will, you know, will give his last dollar out of his pocket for you. One day, Bob was parked in a lot of a local park in West Hollywood, giving blankets and clothing to the homeless from the mobile unit when he heard a woman screaming in the distance. As he ran towards her, he saw that it was Rachel. Bob saw me, two men were beating me up, and he stopped them, and they ran away, and he took me into the RV to clean my wounds, and gave me a shower. I didn't know they had showers in the RVs, and then he, Clean my wounds and give me clothes and food. And then I've been helping Bob, you know, going to other places, you know, to feed the homeless people, give them clothes, you know, and bring them to the clinic, Sunset Clinic. When Thanksgiving and Christmas time came around, he went to find Rachel at the park she usually lived in and brought her to the clinic for lunch. Each year for the holidays, he helped organize free lunches for individuals living near or below the poverty line. At those events, he would also have blankets, clothing, and hygiene kits available to hand out. Don't forget Christmas Day, okay? <laughs> Christmas Day, get us fuck out, okay? Everything's inside the room, get dressed right now. Okay. On Christmas, he dressed up as Santa Claus, and the volunteers helped him distribute over 500 toys to children from low-income families year after year. Oh, 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 oh. He will sit me out with a taxi to pick other homeless people up and bring them to the free clinic. And help them over 20 years. In his last days, you know, he'd been a little tired. You know, I know there was something wrong, you know, because he sometimes he wouldn't show up, you know, on Christmas. Because I'm always like, you know, I expected, you know, Bob to be here at this at the free clinic. 
in his RV. Sometimes, you know, it wasn't there, you know, I said, I wonder, where was Pop? You know, and stuff. Something wrong, because he never missed a Christmas or a Thanksgiving and stuff. And then I found out they couldn't, they said that he passed away. In retracing Bob's footsteps, I saw how one man could mean so much to so many. In the conversations I had with those who knew Bob, it was clear that his heroism was not only marked by the services he provided, but by the sincerity and the compassion which he offered everyone that he encountered. His grandson Stevie, who went with him on the RV to provide services to the homeless, became a firefighter and continues Bob's legacy. And Rachel, who Bob helped during her time of need, continues to volunteer at the clinic's annual Thanksgiving and Christmas Day parties, and now is living in her own home. Though Bob passed away, his legacy continues to live on through the thousands of people that he inspired. And it reminds every single one of us that our contributions matter, regardless of how big or how small. And that one person, just one like Bob, could make a beautiful, lasting difference.